Hey friend, welcome to the Grief to Great Day podcast. Do you feel like you're going crazy? Is the shower the only place for you to really cry? Are you surrounded by people, but you still feel all alone? Do you want to be the you you were before your loved one died, but you have no idea how to get there? I'm Steph Cabanis, Southern by choice, wife, turtle triathlete, Jesus follower, and fellow traveler in the journey of grief. I too struggled to breathe, questioned God and my faith, and thought I would never be happy again. But God took my brokenness and he turned it into a breakthrough. So if you're ready to understand how to navigate grief, lean into your faith, and take just one step towards healing, then bring your ugly cry, get into a comfortable place, even if that's your bed right now, and let the healing begin. Girl there's hope for your future. Come on in the house and join me on that couch. I'm Steph and this is Grief to Great Day. Thank you for being here. I know this is a podcast you did not want to have to search for, but I hope you always feel welcomed and heard through these episodes. Grief to Great Day is downloaded in over a hundred different countries in almost all the continents. This should tell you that you're not alone as you walk out the hardest journey of your life. And it tells me that there's a need to talk about grief from a Christian perspective. If you're listening for the first time and you wonder who Monica is, well, she's the reason that Grief to Great Day exists. She died within six months of being diagnosed with stage four cancer, but her faith journey changed my life. It changed me. Her story could change you too, So if you want to learn more about Dying to be Healed, the book I wrote about her crazy faith and undeniable fortitude, go to my website, grief2greatday.com, and click on the book tab. In this podcast, we talk about understanding grief. Like, it's not just about being sad. We talk about how to get through the day when you got nothing left, and how to grow your faith, even if you don't want to talk to God right now. So if you're just starting your journey, please know that life will change. It won't always hurt like this. It's important for you to grab a hold of that. So I'll say it again. Your life will change and it won't always hurt like this. This is not to say that you'll stop missing your loved one because you won't. But you will be able to breathe, to laugh, and to live again. Cuss words. You remember back in the day, I mean, maybe you've never cussed. That was not my experience. But if you cussed, somebody would say, ooh, I'm telling, telling because you're not supposed to say those things. Well, the definition is to say words that aren't polite because you're angry. That's the definition. In grief, there are words that uh, we don't want to say or hear Because when we do hear them, it creates all kinds of emotions, anger, offense, and did I mention anger? On a good day in grief, the biggest of these cuss words can cause you to shut down. Well, again, that was my experience, but maybe it's different for you. Let's see. When I tell you, truth and love, alert, when I tell you that at some point, You're going to have to accept what has happened. How does that hit your heart? My reaction was pure rebellion because in my mind, the word acceptance meant agreeing with or approving of. And I had no intention of doing either of those things. This is where I thought my faith was lacking, that if I just had more faith, And at that point, I felt like I had none. But if I just had more faith, then I could accept what God allowed. But coming to a place of acceptance is the crazy ride of grief. There's so much rolled up in that word. And that's what I want to talk about today. So we're going to talk about what's included in acceptance. You don't just go from no way in the world am I okay with this to okay, Lord, whatever you say, doesn't work that way. So I'm going to talk about what it really means and three reasons that the grief cuss words, such as acceptance, will help you 
rebuild your life. Let me start by saying that if you have just begun walking through your loss within this first year, this episode is not meant to make you feel like you're behind or like it's never going to happen. Because after a tragic loss, you're not just going to jump on the acceptance bandwagon. You are, after all, human. And God gave us relationships. So when an important relationship is over in the way that you knew it, there's another journey ahead. And it is a marathon and not a sprint. I've said that before, but when I say that, a marathon and not a sprint, maybe I need to be a little more detailed. I think you get the overall idea, but listen to this. A sprint is fast and it's measured in terms of meters, which is around three and a third feet. So the 100 meter dash is around 330 feet. A marathon, on the other hand, is 26.2 miles or 138,336 feet. So 330 feet for a sprint and 138,336 feet for a marathon. Grief is definitely a marathon. I'm making this point to ease your mind so that you don't think you're supposed to be there in three months, six months, nine months, or even 12 months. I know a lot of women, me included, who think or thought that in three months, things should be changing for the better. But that would be a sprint and not realistic at all. I think there are several cuss words in grief, including trust and patience, grace, forgiveness, and realistic expectations. We don't want to hear about any of those things because I believe that trust is wrapped up in acceptance. I'm focusing on acceptance today. And after you come to a place of acceptance, you are more likely to be patient or give yourself more grief grace because your expectations will have shifted. Acceptance is not agreeing with what happened. I still do not agree with how Monica suffered and died. I don't agree with the fact that she had to go through so much agony while sharing her unfailing faith. I did not approve of the fact that I was a part of her music ministry. And now the singer or the music in the music ministry was gone. I didn't approve of the fact that I had no say in anything because in my mind, That meant God didn't really heal and he didn't really care about her pain or mine. So what is acceptance then? Instead of defining it though, I want to share what it looks like because really that's what you want to know, right? When is it coming and what does it feel like? Well, acceptance is when the why questions stop taking over your day. Acceptance is when you can say for real, that God is sovereign, and that while you don't agree with or even approve of, you will surrender to God's greater plan because you trust there actually is one. For me, I still questioned why, but over time it was quieter and it didn't take over my day any longer. I'm telling you, when you get there, it is amazing. It also stopped making me question God's existence God's goodness, and the fact that he cared about me. Starting to accept what happened did not take away the pain. Oh, how I wish it would have. But, and maybe this is the more important point, acceptance did allow me to walk through the pain with fears and tears to the point of giving up my plans and expectations over my life forevermore to the one who created me. It looks like John the Baptist in jail. He had questions. (laughs) God, are you really the one? But ultimately, he died for Jesus. You know, it's ironic that when Monica and I talked about Christians being martyred, and I think this was around the time that we stopped saying Merry Christmas and went to Happy Holidays, and we're like, man, what's the world going to look like 10, 20 years from now? 
really glad she never saw that. But when we talked about Christians being martyred and wondered if it would ever be like that in the U.S., she always said that she hoped she would profess Christ even to the death. And she did that in a different way. Please understand that acceptance is not a measure of faith. Grief, it takes you over. It's a whole body experience, physical, emotional, and spiritual. It is a process and one that will take way longer than you ever imagined. The time it takes will frustrate you and it's going to make you think you're starting over at least 1,000 times. There are so many details to juggle. There are landmines and milestones. There's the business of death, the funeral, the service, the estate. Oh my gosh. And most of all, there's the pain that cannot be described with words. Acceptance is built on trust and trust cannot occur if you don't allow God in the process. Now you don't have to pray as you once did because you won't. You don't have to read the Bible or do Bible studies as you did before your loss, because you can't. You don't and really cannot fake any of that stuff, and you won't have the energy to try. But let me tell you that there are three really important things that will take you from where you are today toward trust and acceptance and ultimately being able, and more importantly, wanting to rebuild a life with the belief the confidence that it can be good again. No, never the same, but with a relationship with God like you've never experienced before. Those three things are what I've shared since the beginning of the Grief to Great Day podcast almost three years ago now. Pray, read, and rise. Pray. That could be as simple as calling the name of Jesus. That could be as complicated as telling him everything you feel that you actually feel. I found that when I went to pray, it was so hard because, you know, you had that prescribed way of praying. You have the way you used to pray. And now all you really want to do is ask him why and yell. And I didn't have the energy to be anything less than real. That's what God wants from you is your heart your whole heart, your honest heart. Read. That could be one verse in the Bible every day, even if it's the same verse for a hundred days. God's going to use whatever you got to change your life and heal your heart. And rise. Get up. Get up. Change the environment. Have coffee with a friend. Walk into the store or go to church. You don't have to stay anywhere, but you do have to start somewhere. Now, how does this word acceptance translate into rebuilding your life? Acceptance only comes when trust is restored. You're not going to accept what's happened until you trust God with the rest of your life. You're going to trust him even though he allowed such loss and pain. Acceptance no longer says, if only... It now says, even if. But when you get there, you will no longer be stuck in confusion or darkness, depression, addiction, turmoil, anger, rage, unforgiveness, and loss. Oh, the difference when you find acceptance. You will not be able to stay quiet on what God has done for you. Doesn't that sound crazy right now? It did to me in the beginning too, but it is real. The cuss word of acceptance is going to help you rebuild your life in the following ways. Number one, getting to acceptance, it's a process. It's a process of taking inventory of your relationship with God. I realized pretty quickly that my Christianity had no power. I realized later that my Christianity was based on religion. Therefore, everything was in my power and I was a hot mess and felt like an utter failure. Even though I used my first two years, ladies, listen to that, not two weeks, two months, but two years to fight with God. And that's all I really did. But he turned my passion 
of anger and trying to prove him wrong. He used that, turned it, redeemed it for my good. You're actually going to feel the shift between why God and what now, God. Your anger, it'll turn to a little bit of trust, a mustard seed of faith. And your perspective on who God is will forever, forever be changed. Life will be different in a good and meaningful way. Again, this does not mean that you're not going to hurt or feel the pain of loss. But you'll feel God in a more tangible way than ever. And your tears of gratitude, they will flow as easily as your tears of loss. Number three, your overwhelm of loss, pain, and grief will actually turn into overwhelm of gratitude. Of what you had with your loved one. Of their life, of their impact, now of their legacy, and what you still have. It will turn into strength. You will never go through such pain without building incredible strength. And it will turn into joy. The kind that, as the Bible says, cannot be explained. Because to the world, it will make no sense. The word of the week is Romans 3, 2 to 4. Through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace, in which we now stand, so We believed God enough to be saved. We now boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. I know that stings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, if you've not been a part of the private Facebook group, You don't know about Stephanie Floor, the unlikely missionary, so you need to join the group and check her out. (laughs) But she is a part of the group, and we email. And she has recently said this, which I think fit perfectly. I had already written the episode, but this fits perfectly. For her, Romans 5, trials bring patience. Patience brings experience. Experience brings hope. Hope allows us to stand with no shame. She said, I wish there was another way for all of that to happen, but I haven't seen it yet. So the trials that come, I see a process where my Abba is placing in cement hope. That's powerful. What would it be like to have hope in cement? Not changeable, not breakable, that strong. That is where you, my dear friend, are heading. For all things Grief to Great Day, visit my website, grief2greatday.com. If you've just lost your loved one, there are two important resources there. The first one is the Journey of Grief Seminar. It's to help you get an idea of what to expect on the journey you never wanted to be on. It'll help you breathe a little easier when you understand that you're not going crazy. It's the grief. And you can download the Journey of Grief PDF. I encourage you to download it and print it and look at it often. Also, there's a workshop called The First Year of Grief, How to Survive with Hope and Heal. Now that's going to walk you through the most important actions to start taking right now after your loved one has died. I know you don't want to do any actions right now. You want to stay in the bed or stay on the couch or hide from the world. But time itself will not heal all wounds. You have to take action. And the action you take needs to be in the right direction. So this workshop is always going to point you to God, the true physician and ultimate healer. Remember to check out Coffee and Kathy, our weekly devotion episode on Thursdays. And if you don't have a home church, visit my church, opendoorchurch.com. Links to everything you need are in the show notes. You're not alone. You're not going crazy. This is not your forever. And God has plans for you. Keep on coming back to the house. Keep sitting on the couch. And keep taking action toward healing. Thank you for being here today. For showing up. If this podcast has given you hope, encouragement, or helped you in any way, share it with a friend, either in a text or on your social platforms. Also, 
please subscribe, rate, and leave a written review on iTunes. It's a huge blessing for me to know that you're out there. Lastly, and this is important, you are not alone. Connect with me on the Grief to Great Day website, the link is below, and sign up for our free newsletters. I want to be able to pray for you by name. Remember, grief isn't something you're going to get over, but a great day is something you can get to.